Hey guys, Adam Stroni and Andrew back today with episode 5 of removing the 3.8 and today we should actually be able to remove it. We've just done a few more things to prepare. We disconnected all the spark plugs just so they're out of the way and I disconnected the clutch cable underneath. And now we have to find out some way to connect to this to the headers and then we'll pull the engine up, forward and out, it's hopefully. I'm not sure. All right, we're back and our solution to this problem was found at Walmart with some quality ratchet straps. Uh, each one is rated up to a thousand pounds so hopefully we're good. And we've got the Pittsburgh on one half ton because uh, it's extended out further and I think we're good. And it's attached to the headers which hopefully don't break. Something's probably going to go wrong. Oh my god. <laughs> He's added to our sketchiness. Alright, we'll keep you updated. God, the handle's nearly falling out. Oh my god. This is a design flaw. Oh no, we've lifted the car. The car is lifted? Yes. That side, the car is lifted. Oh, that one's slipping. Oh, it is? And that one needs to be redone. Stupid Walmart ratchet straps. God, I guess you should probably cut the video. Alright, we've um, reset the ratchet straps and they're much better now. Yeah, let's see if we can actually see it move on camera. That's what I like to see. So, we, well, I'm not sure when we should start trying to pull it forward. This is true. Let me inspect the transmission. The transmission is still attached, so we need to pull the engine up enough for it to be off. The bolts need to be out of the engine mount. And then we need to slide the engine forwards, hopefully. Most people pull the transmission, bell housing, and engine all at once, but we were not able to get the transmission out because of the cross member bolts. The crowbar. I guess I could try to pull it back. Oh, oh. no. I think that was just that. Maybe something came loose. It was a ratchet strap making sketchy noises. Unfortunately, they're getting quite beat up. This one's starting to fray over here. Oh, that's not a good start. We've barely lifted anything. Oh, I think I broke something loose. Okay. What are you doing exactly down there? I don't know, I probably busted it. So he was prying on random things by the sounds of it. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm crowbarring the bell housing away from the transmission. Oh, okay. In the hopes of breaking it slightly loose. Oh, okay. It made quite loud noises doing that. <laughs> I've probably broken my transmission. I don't think so, but maybe. I was going to maybe move it back slightly. Oops. Man, that was up quite a lot. I thought you said it goes down easy. I guess I lied. God. Good lord. So, as you can tell, the engine is above the hood line, or where the hood would be. Unfortunately, the exhaust is currently catching on the uh, steering shaft. I think that's literally the only thing holding us in. So we're just going to try to raise it a bit more and hope for the best. I worry greatly about our um, strap placement. The whole engine looks like it wants to flip over backwards. Oh, you're out of the transmission. Right there. Unfortunately, there's a what? Our stupid power wire going to the subwoofer is attached to the positive. What? The subwoofer power wire. This is unrelated to the engine actually coming out. Which I think is going to come out, because I don't really think it's... Well, it's still hitting something. Hey, that's the steering column. This. It's a connect... 
Oh, I guess. And this is connected to the engine, isn't it? Yes. I guess we should probably undo that hole. Are we still recording? Yeah. <laughs> you pointed it at the ceiling. Good luck editing this crap. No. It's 50 degrees in here. <laughs> Not a smoking light again. Good lord. The good news is I disconnected some O2 sensors. Very close. I, uh, just cut I decided to just <laughs> cut the wire because screw O2 sensors. And then it turns out there were two things attached onto the transmission. I guess I could pull those up here. They were very tragic. Um, it was this clip here and this guy here. I broke this one because we have a new one and this one popped right off. But I think that's literally everything. Of course, my speaker wire has to be disconnected now, but we're going to get to that right now. I say we just cut it. The speaker wire? That's not coming off. All right. Have you seen that bolt? That'll come off. Are you sure? Cut it as close as you can to up there, like as close as possible. Good. Oh, wait a second. Something's still connected here. Oh, no. <laughs> well, we, this is wires. Oops, I've stepped on your shoe. Unscrew the cap, then we can get it off. There. Maybe. I worry that one. the engines move slightly now that that's. Let me uh, put this back in. That's going much God. easier now that that stupid pressure is off of it. All right, hopefully that was the last clip. Apparently there's a clip coming off your alternator too that we missed. Yeah, I can record. I was recording the floor. <laughs> Let's see. I've just noticed there's a uh, there's something here. I'm gonna pause the video. Well, it turns out we're more stupid than we thought. There's two clips right below where we thought the last clip was. There's one. There's one, and then there's a second one down there. And it turns out the main engine ground is there as well, which we're also gonna cut because I have the most tragic ground cable in the history of Earth. Yes. Quite bad. Um, this is not like a tragedy. Take it. All right. Well, when we get that last clip down there, I'm not even sure what those are for, but that should literally be the last I thing. I don't even know if we have to get that off. Oh. No, we just have to cut oh, that's... this ground cable. Okay. All right. Well, hopefully that's the last thing. Even though I've said that about 50 times already. All right, cut through the ground wire there. It's actually not that bad there, but we're still going to do a new one. All right, I think this is it. How high? How much higher does it go? Oh, it goes quite high. Oh, that's going to. I've set up the tripod on the 5.0 <laughs> to pull out the 3.8. Still good? Yes. This sounds looking good. Much liquid is dripping off the back. Good lord. Close to the map tight. Close to the 
does lower the power down to this one as well. Oh yeah. Stupid fuel lines have been caught on everything, but they're finally clean. And I think they're on damage. Well, we're having a few clearance issues with this last cat, so we're going to just cut it off. Oh, it's quite close now. I want to hit it with a hammer. <laughs> oh my. How has it done that? Good lord. Did that take the fire out of things? There you go. Oh! oh. <laughs> That's gone wrong. That's nearly murdered me. <laughs> well, I think we need a new blade. <laughs> Alright, we've got both cats off now. We're about to sketchily move this over. I'm gonna put the camera down and help Andrew. So we don't die, hopefully. Alright, everything here has been uh, removed somehow. We managed to do it. And uh, we've moved the crane over there. We made it over this crack in the garage. Fortunately, we nearly took out that light bulb. And uh, other than that, we've done quite well here removing the 3.8. Alright, well, I think this concludes episode 5 of removing the 3.8 and installing the 5.0. This was probably the easy part. I worry putting it back together will be more difficult, but we'll take you along for the ride, and we'll see you guys next time.